back to the financial aspect. I mean, when you grew up, started on the Sunshine Tour, I mean, the financial aspect was, let's call it, part of playing professional yeah. golf, but it wasn't your everything, right? No. Um, you know, my advice to kids, if you're going to play for a glamorous lifestyle, you're going to get hit hard very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because to get, get to that reality. point in time is 10 years or so of grinding. Right? Yeah, I mean, I can tell you exactly how I started. So, I mean, look, we lost our farm in Zimbabwe. We came to South Africa with not a lot. Yeah, Maturi. Yeah, and um, we came with not a lot. We're fortunate enough. My dad got a job in Bloom, and we went to Bloom, and I was fortunate enough to go to a great school. Um which gave me kind of a front foot and you know that school is is really supportive of of all their all their students that come out of that school which is amazing and um you know i went to a golf academy for two years paid my dues you know i was waiting tables at night practicing golf during the day <clears throat> that's what i did and i did that for two years and my dad helped pay my parents helped pay for that and but i had a two-year i had a two-year window that's all i had and um i'll I got to Q school in Val de Grace and Paris and I got through, got my card and um, the rest is kind of history in a way. You know, I kept my card the first year but I still waited tables. That, that whole first year, I waited tables just to pay to get to events. So I missed, you know, numerous events that I couldn't go and pre-qualify for because I didn't have the money. Yeah, I had to go and waiter and pay my dues and I did that and I practiced and I practiced hard. I'll tell you, we used to have these crates of balls at Schoolman Park. There were 500 balls in a crate. And I remember standing there with J.B. Kruger. You know, 7 o'clock in the morning in the winter in Bloom. Let me tell you what, it's, it's cold. It's yeah. yeah, you're having Maybe. a cup of coffee and you yeah. had a little plastic Coke bottle with boiling water just to keep your hands cold, warm. Yeah. yeah, and you used to hold that as a little hand warmer and off you went. Hit your 500 balls, stop for lunch, go chip and putt, go play nine holes. That was it. And that was my day. It was a daily routine for, you know, a good three years. And then... um I started to play better and better and better. I had a really good year in the Big Easy Tour, which, you know, Ernie and, uh, and yeah. a few other guys started. And that was, that gave me a lot of confidence. And then, then I won on the Sunshine Tour. Yeah. And, which was um, your first event? Uh, Polo Kwani Classic. I was going to Polo Kwani, yeah. 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 It was a, I have an amazing story about that, actually. Um, Please tell us. Well, yeah. Just before that, I actually got sponsored by Sam Hackner and Investec. Um, I played in Royal Swazi. And I think I finished third or fourth. And, um, you know, he, he gave me a sponsorship, which again, that stopped me from waiting tables. You know, that gave me the opportunity to actually just give golf like a full time go. And then, um, my grandfather got diagnosed with cancer, terminal cancer, uh, about three, four months before the Polo Kwani Classic. And he was going, um, he was here in Joburg actually for his last treatment of chemo before heading back to Botswana where my parents then moved to. Um, and on the way there, the way they explained it, there was a T-junction. I was four behind Titchmore going into the last day, and Titch was playing great. But they got to a T-junction, and to turn left, you went to Botswana, and to turn right, you went to Polokwane. And they got there, and my dad was about to turn left, and my grandfather said, there's no ways. Turning there's right. no ways we're turning right. We're going to go watch. And, I mean, I get goosebumps just mm. talking about it. And they turned right and they were about in, I'd just finished my second round and they phoned me and they said, we're on our way. Is there any way for us to stay? And the guys that I'd played with had all missed the cut. So in the like Airbnb that we'd booked, um, there was, a, there were a couple of rooms available. So I said, yeah, pull in. I'm the only one here. And they came and stayed and we went to Mug and Bean that night and all my grandfather could stomach was a little bit of broth and some water and, um, he walked all 18 holes, and in those days, we didn't uh, even have the ropes on the side. There was not even water on the golf course. There wasn't, yeah, there was nothing. You know, yeah. we used to have the little Coleman's on the, yeah. you know, on the golf course with a plate, with like a styrofoam yeah. cup that yeah. you would put your water in. And, um, yeah, he walked all 18 holes right next to me that whole day, and I ended up winning the tournament by four. What a special and, one. And, uh, I mean, tears, eh? Mm. On that 18th green, I'd never won, you know, I didn't even win on the Big Easy Tour. I think, it, you know, that year I had, I had five second places, you know. Never won as a professional. And uh, that was it. That was the first win. And that was that was the start of, you know, my self-belief and my, okay, I can do this. You know, I beat Titch, who was one okay. of the best amateurs yeah, that our country's ever, 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 you know, proved, proven and taken through. And then he's played in Europe and played all over the world and, and to beat a guy that I looked up to was 
was special and he was a really, really gracious, you know, loser and he was I'll never forget he shook my hand and he says, You know what, you deserve it. You're a hell of a player and I look forward to seeing what happens next for you. And um for someone like that again to say stuff like that, that's special. And um yeah, I sat in the in the bar afterwards, had a beer with my dad and Retief Kusin's brother was there and we had a beer and and then uh I uh I kinda shed a little tear and Yeah, of course. Got in a car with a couple of mates and drove back to Bloom and they went to Botswana. That was it. That was the end of that victory and then you know, a few years later I managed to kick on and do some more special things, which is cool. Would you say that's one of your most special wins? I'd say as yeah. as far as wins go, I mean take the money out of it and take yeah, yeah. everything out yeah, of it, yeah. that was probably that's... my most special one, yeah. Because one, it was my first. You never forget your first win. And two, just because of the the situation and, and what they did, you know. The moment. That moment, you know. I'll never get that back. He's not with us anymore. And I think about that all the time. He was a very, very special man. You know, the <clears throat> that ability to put your mind to it for 18 holes for him to walk that, I can just imagine the pain that went through it. Yeah. You know, for him to have that that mindset to be able to support you like that it's so fortunate that you had that type of dynamics and you know and not that we're naming any people but family dynamics is a challenge you know yeah. it's not always easy and for you to have that type of support it's certainly part of your success today yeah without um without my parents and my grandparents i wouldn't be where i am today yeah. for sure they um they gave up so much you know for me and and my career when i was younger and you know moved moved to botswana to earn a better salary far away from myself and my brother yeah. but just to give us an opportunity yeah. to both try and play golf you know the salary they were earning here in south africa wasn't wasn't enough for that you yeah. know my brother was in the ernie alston fan court foundation so my parents were preparing for him to turn professional and and try and do the same thing i did you know so yeah they they did a, they sacrificed a lot and my grandparents as well you know having to you know leave zimbabwe and do all of that and go through go through all of that was were trying times but um, they they did that to give my brother and I the best opportunity to be what we could be. And um, we've both turned out pretty good. So very, very grateful and thankful. Shame to all the parents that are probably still going through that at the moment. Their child is at a particular point. Thank you to all of those parents that yeah. are brave. And hopefully one day your son or daughter can sit here on this chair or a chair and yeah. thank you in the most gracious way that you just did. That would, uh, that would be very, 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 very special for me. Um, now that I'm a dad, I, I think I understand it's it dead. more than ever. Mm, yeah. yeah. And I say always, as I get an older dad, you know, and, um, 41 year old dad, for me, as that, <clears throat> it's amazing how much more they mean to you. And my mom's 70th was on Saturday and one of the moments I just said to her, I now have some more insight, not fully yet, as to all the little moments and the sacrifices and the things that we just took for granted, what they had to do in order to make that happen and, and, and put you in a position to, to have some success in life. Exactly. You know, um, you, you don't realize all the small things until you, you sit down and you actually, you know, when I speak to my dad and we have a little one to one and a heart to heart and, you know, the stuff that they, the stuff that they did, you know, whether it was, being really firm and harsh yeah, with me yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. or it was being lenient and kind of giving me my own reins yeah. um, you don't understand that fully until you become a parent and yeah. your kids 100%. get to that age and, and you realize what's what's needed and what's best for them you know because every every person's different and every human is different so yeah. it's pretty it's a pretty cool thing to go through as a, as a human being it's, yes. it's pretty special